Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to download weather images such as these directly from a Russian weather satellite. Hey guys, welcome back. Glad you could join me today. Today I'm going to show you how to download images from the Russian Meteor M2 satellite using a USB software defined radio such as this. This is my Noelec unit. I paid a little over $10 for this one. You can buy them anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. You're going to need an antenna adapter out to a QFH antenna. I won't show you how to make one of those in this video, but if you're not already using software-defined radios, check out the link in this video down at the bottom to some of my other videos describing how to use them. Uh, this will depend a little bit on prior knowledge using SDR. I won't go into the details, just more or less how to receive the Russian M2 Meteor satellite and how to decode the images. Glad you could join me today. So to get started with receiving the Russian Meteor M2 satellite, what I used is a PDF I'll link to in the description that walks you through some of the basics of setting this up. We'll cover all the highlights here in this video. What you'll need is you're going to need some form of a tracking program to tell you when the satellite is coming over. You can do this online on web pages, or in my case, I use Orbitron. Uh, I love Orbitron because it allows me to directly tune my SDR Sharp program for Doppler if needed. For the uh, Meteor M2, you're not going to need to correct for Doppler at all, so we're just going to set a static tuning in. What I've done is I've queued up uh, a previous recording I took. Uh, we, I don't have a pass right now, so we can't do it live. But what you want to do is you need to get 137.100 centered in the center of your SDR Sharp program. This is critical before you do the baseband recording. So what I do is I center it and then you need to record an 8-bit PCM baseband and then I look at the file name that it generates and it should have 137 100 in the file name. If you're off by 137 1 by quite a bit you need to shift. Uh, if anybody remembers the old SDR Sharp used to allow you to put a center point in here. I, I'm sure there's an easier way than what I'm doing here, guys, but uh, maybe someone can point that out. But all I do is just keep hitting record, checking the file name, and once I get the file name to display something along the lines of this. 137.104 is what I recorded this at. That's close enough in this case, but it has to be centered. My early recordings, I was tuned, but I was way over here. The decoding program can't work then. And as you can see in this recording, we're starting to receive the satellite here. Uh, there's no need to worry about any of your settings when you're recording it, guys, because we're gonna t we're taking a baseband recording. So as the satellite comes over, you're centered. On your 137-100, you're going to record the entire baseband for the duration of this recording. In this case, this one is 683 megabytes worth of an IQ file. So uh, I'll attempt to time shift ahead here, and we'll pick this up in a minute. Okay, a little further along into this recording, I'm noticing my screen capture software is actually causing SDR Sharp to be recorded real jittery, but I assure you this is smooth on my end. So this is what I was able to capture for a signal. You can see is a good strong signal strength there. Uh, now we can take this recording and we can post process it. So what you do is you open Audacity and you're going to import the file that you just recorded. Uh, you can just hit file open and we want we're going to do this one and we're going to open the SDR sharp file. You can make allow it to make a copy to work with it and this will take some time to import. It's quite a large file so once this is imported I will show you how to work with it. Our Audacity program has now pulled in the file in its entirety. This really hefty file. What we have to there's only one thing we have to do in here. We have to change the project rate 
to 130 kilohertz, 130,000. And that will allow us to export the file so we can work with it. So we're going to click File, Export, rename it to something else. Uh, we can do Test, whatever the heck, and hit Save. It'll pop up with a little window here wanting us to add metadata and stuff. We don't have to do that. And now we're going to export the entire file as a wave and that will allow us to decode this. So I'll cut back in a minute and we will work with this file. So now we've exported the file from Audacity at 130 kilohertz. What you're going to need is the LRPRX program. It'll be linked in the description below. We're gonna open that and we're going to do IQ swap and we're gonna to navigate to our export file, which in this case I fixed the gobbledygook on the end and it's just called export. We're gonna open the file and queue it up so we can see if we're going to be able to decode this recording. From here, we just hit run. And we can fast forward a little bit on this one. And here we go. This is midway-ish through our recording. And what you should see is four well-defined groups in the constellation diagram. This means we've got a good recording. We can work with this and we should have good luck decoding it. So what I do, and which has worked for me so far, is I stop it here, I close the program out, open it back up, do the same again, cue the file up, except this time, don't fast forward allow it to decode the entire program. So let this progress bar go all the way across and when it gets to the end, you can click stop and that will save the entire file. Uh, you have to hit stop at the end, otherwise it'll run indefinitely. So we'll just let this go across and we'll finish up. Okay, so we've let this run all the way across and we've hit stop. On my PC, this uh, program outputs the file to the root of C. So go to your C drive root and find the Meteor 001 raw file. And in this case, for some reason, this one's showing zero kilobytes right now, but that's a glitch. It's lying. From here, you can put it wherever you want and you can open the program linked below the LRPT offline decoder program. What we're gonna do, we know this thing is in 72K mode. If it's not, we can't do anything with it anyway. So we're gonna open our raw file. We're gonna navigate back to where I put it. Notice how it doesn't show, so don't worry about that. Just click all files and sure enough, there it is. We're gonna open it and we're going to let this thing grind away on this decoding. And uh, with any luck, we should get a picture out of this. Okay, we've got an image, we can work with this. So from here, we can hit generate RGB and we can have a look at what we've got. We've got a pretty good image here, but the coloring's a little off. So this is what you can do with these. You can, you can change these uh, and regenerate the RGB until you find something that resembles what you're after. So we want a little less red. And to be honest, guys, I'm no good with this yet. And let's try that. And we just need to work with our blues a little bit here. And we would be pretty good, but we've got an image. Once you've got your image, then you can hit save. So now that we've saved our image, I did a little bit more work on the levels and this is what I end up with. Uh, pretty great image, pretty happy with this. Uh, can't see much on the ground through the cloud soup, but the detail here is pretty impressive. Way better than the NOAA sats. So let's do one more thing. I'll link to this in the bottom. There's another program that you can get called Smooth Meteor. And what we're going to do is we're going to load the raw image that we just finished. We want this one. There's a raw image, same as what you can see in the background. Pretty good, pretty happy with that. Let's hit rectify image and see what happens. 
this is what we'll get as a rectified image and this will uh, stretch it back out to be more realistic in size and uh, a lot less uh, uh, scrunched up show us the curvature and show us a, a lot better representation of a true image from space so uh, and then once we're done with that it's pretty easy you just hit save as bitmap or save as JPEG and then we will have the rectified version which gives us this and this you can see is a lot better uh, pretty happy about this so I'll link this program in the description and that's it guys you can uh, use your uh, under $20 SDR devices to decode the Meteor M2 Russian weather sat images uh, the satellite I believe is still being commissioned so I'm not sure how this is going to work out in the future if we'll have more options or whether we'll be stopped altogether from receiving these I have no idea but I'm enjoying it for now if you enjoyed this video, please consider a thumbs up down below, subscribe, I look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thanks for watching.